Good afternoon, I'm Herman Green with the Midday News. A special welcome to those of you watching online at onespotmedia.com. TVJ News has received reports that emergency services are at the scene of a serious motor vehicle crash on Waltham Park Road in Kingston. There are reports of casualties. It's understood that shortly after 11 o'clock, a car ran off the road and crashed into several persons. We've, we'll have more on this developing story in subsequent newscasts. British Prime Minister Theresa May is likely to meet with Caribbean leaders tomorrow to discuss their concerns on the issue of the deportation of the Windrush generation. These are Caribbean nationals who went to the United Kingdom as children over 50 years ago. The Guardian newspaper said Downing Street's change of heart followed the publication of a letter signed by more than 140 members of parliament from across the political spectrum. The letter, which was sent to Mrs. May, expressed concern about the many long-term British residents who have been incorrectly identified as illegal immigrants. The request for a meeting came from representatives of 12 Caribbean countries and is to be attended by Prime Minister Andrew Holness. It was earlier reported that Mrs. May had refused the formal diplomatic request. However, in a statement this morning, Downing Street said the Prime Minister only became aware of the request today. The statement continued, saying, Mrs. May deeply values the contribution made by the affected residents and all Commonwealth citizens who have made a life in the UK. It said the Prime Minister is making sure the Home Office is offering the correct solution for individual situations. The statement adds that she is aware that many people are unlikely to have documents that are over 40 years old and assured that no one will, with the right to be in the UK will be made to leave. Meanwhile, Home Secretary Amber Rudd has apologized for the treatment of the Windrush generation, saying it was wrong and appalling that some face deportation. Many long-term immigrants who arrived from the Commonwealth as children have been told they are in the UK illegally. However, the Home Secretary has announced a new task force to help those affected and promised to waive fees for new documents needed to prove their status and stay in the UK. The education curriculum for history needs an urgent overhaul. That's according to the National Council on Reparation, which has been researching and pushing Jamaica's call for reparation from Europe for the losses and hardships caused by slavery. At the latest RJR News Forum, council members indicated that most Jamaicans are not fully aware of the impact of slavery, as the history that continues to be taught is from the slave owner's perspective. It's our responsibility to educate. The Center for Reparation Research has an education mandate to let people know exactly what's going on with regard to reparation. And that's why the National Council on Reparation will be ramping up its education drive in coming weeks. Co-chair of the Council, Professor Verine Shepard, says for the almost 10 years of research and advocacy, there has even been resistance from Jamaicans who seem to side with colonizers. Council member Stephen Golding links this to a flawed education curriculum. That's certainly where the National Council on Reparation has chosen to put a lot of focus in the past year and in this coming year. Um, we have an upcoming youth conference on reparations. It's going to take place on May 25th, which is, uh, you know, African Liberation Day for those who know. The council believes the only way to address the issue is to change what is being taught at all levels. The Ministry of Education has a new grade 7 to 9 history syllabus. And the CSEC history syllabus is to be reviewed shortly. And the CAPE, the, the, the more advanced one, has been reviewed. I, I was privileged to have been asked to be on that review panel and th we actually have a module on repertory justice. The program at teachers colleges are also to be revised. In the meantime, the council says it will continue its independent campaign. For a long time our education was being controlled by the very people who had enslaved and then colonized us. And so the narrative was their narrative. Um, and that is what we are encountering with young people. So when Prof says we're using um, historical dates and events, it is also because we're trying to re-educate the mm -hmm. population. Public sector nurses are not backing down from their quest to get a new wage and fringe benefits agreement by the end of this month. The Nurses Association of Jamaica, NAJ, says it's expecting a date soon for negotiations to continue. Its president, Carmen Johnson, says the recent appointment of a new finance minister should not delay the talks.
hope is that we will have a date early, giving the new minister time to acquaint himself with the whole negotiation process and where we were and where the negotiation ought to be going. And so we wrote reminding them that we're expecting an early date. So I'm just giving them time to settle in and I'm sure he will call us to the table. Very in February, the association objected to the four-year wage agreement offered by the government. It said its members are not likely to benefit from a long-term contract. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, is raising new concerns over the government's pace in coming to a wage agreement with public sector workers. Here is Dashan Hendricks with a primetime news preview. Well, we have just completed a meeting with the International Monetary Fund, which it says the country has essentially remained on track in achieving the targets under the IMF program, but it wrapped the government on the slow pace of the wage negotiations and wage reforms in general. Concerns also about the slow pace of growth in Jamaica and the sanctions on Russia and its likely impact on the Jamaican bauxite and alumina sector. We'll have more for you in primetime news at 7. There are concerns this afternoon regarding the management of markets island-wide, especially that of the Yalas market in St. Thomas. The market has been an issue for the local government ministry for years after it was leased by the former local government administration. The details from TVJ's O'Shane Masters. Local government minister Desmond McKenzie is up in arms over the conditions vendors at the Yalas market in St. Thomas have been enduring for years. He contends that they have been at a disadvantage as they have had to sell their wares outside the market. But what seems to be the source of contention with the market? The Yalas market was leased to an elected representative of the then St. Thomas Parish Council. They leased the market to this elected representative to operate, to operate a junkyard to sell motor vehicle parts, to store motor vehicle parts. But the selling of the items by vendors outside the market is another issue. This as they are forced to be hiding from the police or have their goods confiscated. That's why Minister McKenzie says his ministry will be seeking to have the matter of the Yalas market addressed once and for all, even though it has been in the courts for years and a ruling previously handed down. Are we going to make every attempt again to get back the market so that the vendors can go in the market and ply the trade? It is a disgrace. And what makes it bad it is an elected representative. Minister Mackenzie was speaking at a recent St. James Municipal Corporation meeting. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. And it's time now for a look at what's coming up in this evening's edition of A Ray of Hope. Coming up in this evening's edition of A Ray of Hope. My name is Lenny C. Roden, and I'm the founder of Young Women and Men of Purpose. I realized that many of my students, even though they were 18 and over, many of them had never had the opportunity to sit with anyone to discuss what they wanted to do with their lives. And so I acted as a mentor and a friend for these young persons. Help them overcome the, their obstacles, to give them confidence, to empower them, to make them better agents of change. There are times when I wanted to do things and I just said, boy, I can't manage. But REAP has helped me to be confident in myself. Nothing is too great for me to do. We are not down, we're always up and we must look forward to life and make our attitude be our gratitude. That's a ray of hope this evening during primetime news. And we go on to sports. 17-year-old Demar Lee is one of the few student drivers who have been seen in action on recent programs at the Dover Raceway in St. Anne. He has been displaying his driving skills at Dover for just under a year. Dintel Technical High School student Demar Lee started out in the Bracket 45 class for beginners at Dover in April of last year, but has quickly worked his way up to the improved production class 3. He grew up in Claremont and Discovery Bay and attended York Castle High School in St. Anne before transferring to Dintel Technical, which he has been attending for the past two years. Lee had his most successful day at Dover during the Carnival of Speed meet this past Easter Monday, where he recorded one victory and a second place finish, driving his 1993 Honda Civic EG. 
I grew, grew up around cars. Growing up around my daddy car, everybody car. I started in bracket 45 last year in a Mazda RX-8 and I drove and this year I got a new car and stepped up in class. Demar's father Marlon Lee says his son has always shown a passion for motor racing. From a tender age he has expressed his interest in motorsports. I, I, I've never seen him expressing any other interest, rather. No football, no cricket, no running. He has always loved the sport and uh, you know, I can remember um, him being Jesus and was asked what he wanted to become and he put a race car driver. <laughs> all the other kids were doctors and nurses and all of that. So he, that's the only thing he has been interested in. Hence we, we you know, saw the need to hone that and, and, and got help. The next assignment for Young Lee at Dover will be the Labor Day meet on May 20. So what are his plans for that meet? To win more races and try to get the car a little faster too, so I can run up on more of the faster cars. In the meantime, Demar's father is looking to chart a course for gradual improvement for his teenage son. We're hoping that we can win IP and, and move up to the MP classes. Um, I, you know, money is an issue. Going there, it, you, it takes cash to care. Um, so he, we need a car that is well built. This car now is not too bad, but um, you know a lot of improvement, improvements rather would be needed to, to, to move to those classes. Lee will be given the new driver award at tonight's presentation ceremony for the Easter Monday meet. Lee, who is about to finish fifth form at Dintel Technical, will do seven subjects at the CSEC level starting next month. Spencer Darlington, TVJ Sports. And that's the Midday News. I'm Herman Green. Join us at 7 for the Prime Time News Package. On behalf of the news sports and production teams, good afternoon.